Welcome back to Stevens High School in Claremont, New Hampshire for our Fox News Town Hall with Mayor Pete Buttigieg. So, we got a little bit of time left. I thought we'd do a lightning round. Oh. Quick questions, quick answers. I find the questions are sometimes quicker than the answers are, but let's try. I'll do my best. Um, what's your biggest mistake as mayor of South Bend? Wow. Uh, well, uh, the first time that I fired somebody who reported directly to me, uh, I didn't do it in person. Uh, I write in my book about all of the reasons why that was a mistake, and uh, I never made that mistake again. Why didn't you do it in um, person? Uh, I think at the time, it, you know, to be honest, I don't know. Um, uh, I just know that uh, if I had, things would have gone, uh, I believe, a little differently and a little bit better. You have to be ready to look somebody in the, in the eye and explain the decisions you're making as an executive. Uh, and um, uh, it's, it's not pleasant. It's one of the worst parts of the job. Um, but you have to be prepared to do that. And if you do, your decisions will be more settled, more stable, and easier to defend. You are taking a little bit of heat for something you said the other day. You seem to indicate that you had some troubles with the racial history of Thomas Jefferson, and you suggested that some of the things honoring him, for instance, the traditional Jefferson-Jackson Democratic dinners, that they should be renamed. How far would you carry this? Would you rename streets? Would you rename Jefferson High School? You know, my campaign office is actually on Jefferson Boulevard. Uh, look, um, so are you going to change the name? Uh, I'm not planning that. No, the the. Um, but I think there's a reason why Democratic parties, when we're thinking about for the future, our events, uh, especially think about how um, burning of an issue something like racial equity is. Uh, we're thinking twice about naming our events after Jefferson and, and Jackson. Uh, but this is a great example, actually, of how the media noise machine on the right wing takes things out of control. So I mentioned this that you know some counties are rethinking how some of our events. Some of you might have seen this, right? Um, basically, I said that, uh, um, you know, we're rethinking how we might, democratic functions might name our event. Maybe we should name it for a person who's living. Maybe we should name it after a person of color. I don't know. Next thing you know, you would have thought I had proposed blowing up the Jefferson Memorial in D.C. Um, and folks from Laura Ingram on this network to a columnist actually in the New York Times, so it's not just a, a Fox thing, uh, just jumped on that. It's, it's this uh, mentality that pervades the Twitter sphere, and it's one of the things that we got to get over uh, in this campaign is actually be ready to listen to each other. And I know nuance doesn't do great on cable or on Twitter, uh, but at the very least, we got to actually hear each other out. I suspect that with your schedule, you're not able to do much of this, but when you do, when you and Chaston are kicking back, do you have a guilty pleasure on television? Uh, well, Game of Thrones, so we're, you know, we're uh, <laughs> it's just getting pretty close. Well, I, I have to tell you, when I was promoting this event, I said, I want to make it clear, we will be off the air before yeah. Game of Thrones. We, yeah. we were also I, I'm not sure I would have been able to do this. If oh, I, we, we are also, uh, we're going to have a, a, an iron throne here for you, but it costs too much to move to Claremont, New Hampshire. <laughs> do you have a, a prediction as to who will end up on the throne? I don't know. I'm worried. I, I thought we were getting, uh, you know, building up Daenerys, but uh, obviously she's made, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, if you're behind, but she's made some highly questionable leadership decisions. Uh, so uh, I think it's anybody's bet right now. I'm really interested to see where the ARIA plot line goes. We'll see. Are you going to get a chance to watch it tonight? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What is the coolest thing that's happened to you or done in the campaign? And I don't mean politician cool, like, oh, I got to talk to the people of New Hampshire, but real life. Oh, this cool. is cool. Something, yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something that you kind of pinched yourself, and I can't believe I'm. Hmm. Um, you know, the people you meet from from voters who, who come up to you on a rope line. To uh, had an opportunity recently to visit with President Carter, who uh, who we're all wishing well, by the way, as, as he's recovering, um, and uh, and everybody in between. Um, they they just they educate you on uh, on this country, and uh, you know, I I thought I'd kind of knew something of how the world works as a sitting mayor and a war veteran, somebody with a great education, but um, there's nothing like this process for just putting you in front of so many different kinds of people. And you learn from them every day. Before we go, we would like to give you a chance, a final 30, 45 second closing statement. Uh, the floor is yours, sir. Great. Uh, well, first of all, thanks again for the opportunity and thanks to everybody for being such a great audience. Um, I, I suppose I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't begin by saying that if, if you like what you heard but you want to learn more, since we covered a lot of things but uh, an hour goes by fast, uh, I'm hoping that you'll go to PeteForAmerica.com and uh, learn more about our campaign, learn more about uh, my positions. Uh, look, what we're trying to do here is different because the moment that we're in is different. 
I get that a millennial Midwestern mayor is not what leaps to mind when you think about a prototypical candidate for president. Uh, but I also think we're living on, a mo if it's hard to figure out what's going on right now, it's because we are living on one of those blank pages in between chapters in American history. And what comes next could be ugly or it could be amazing. And uh, I believe running for office is an act of hope. And so is voting for somebody and supporting somebody and volunteering for somebody. I hope you'll join me in making sure that that next era is better than any that we've had so far. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you. Wow, a standing ovation. Right. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Thanks to our audience here at Stevens High School in Claremont, New Hampshire, for your terrific questions. Be sure to join us for our next town hall with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand two weeks from tonight, Sunday, June 2nd, in Dubuque, Iowa. But that's it for tonight. Have a great week, and we'll see you back in Washington next Fox News Sunday. Good night, everybody.